the all generation. I am so glad, hallelujah, for this day and being with all of us coming into the opportunity of being in the presence of the Lord. I am Elder Lisa. This is the Ephesians 320 Ministries. Welcome. And we pray you have a joyous time with us in the Lord. As we talk about 2 Timothy chapter 1, the reminder of the call. Let's be refreshed. Let's be reminded. And let's walk into the call of the Lord for our lives. Join us. Join us. God bless. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. I'm an heir of salvation. Purchased of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, yes God, praising my Savior all the day long, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine, oh what a fool taste of glory divine. I'm an heir of salvation, purchased of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story. This is my song, praising, come on, let's praise the Lord, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior, praising my Savior, praising my Savior. Yes, oh God, all the day long. I love him. Yes, oh God, I love him. I love the Lord today because he cares me in such a fair way. That's why I praise him. I lift him up. I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. So as we enter in prayer, we have a, a heart for prayer because we know that our hearts, when we turn it over to the Lord, that the Lord hears and answers the prayers of the righteous to avail much. So join me, join me. Gracious, holy God. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to even have today. Thank you that this day you designed with us and that you have appointed us to be a part of the day. God, thank you for life. We honor you for the health and the strength and the measure of faith that we have today to come into the presence of you with these, your people, God, who are coming excited and anticipating and looking for the hills believing and trusting that there's a word in this lesson for all of us 
if we yet believe. Help us, oh God, that we would open our hearts today and our minds to your word for us and keep us from falling into timidity. Uh, you know, that spirit of timidity, oh God, where we're acting as if we're unable and uncapable and unworthy, Lord. Rebuke the devil that would tell us that we should be timid and fearful. You said you did not give us the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind, self-discipline, self-control. God, we thank you for it today. Lord, we're asking that you would touch now all of those who are in need of your blessing, Turkey and Syria, and all of the devastation following the earthquake. Oh God, we're praying that those individual families who are restoring, trying to be restored in their mind and restored in their body. We're asking that you would give them strength in this difficult time and in this difficult space. 7,000 lives, Lord, you are in control. Who are we to judge or ask what happened? But God, we're needing you now. We are needing you now. We're needing you. We're needing you on behalf of the war still happening against Ukraine from Russia. We're needing you. We're needing you in our city streets against the violence. God, we need you to come in and interrupt the plan of the devil who tries to steal, kill, and destroy. We need you, oh God. Hallelujah. For those in hospitals and nursing homes, we're declaring a healing and a strength and a power like never before, Lord. We are your people, and we stand up in your voice. We stand up on your word. We stand up in your power. We stand up for your authority. We are believing that whatever we need now personally, whatever each of us individually needs, we're believing you for it. God. We cast every care on you because we know you care. You care for us. We, we know you care for us, God. You see us, and I know you can for us. And so we open up our hearts to believe and, every, and, and we open up our hearts to receive. We're preparing ourselves, God, to receive what you want to give to us. The, the, un, the unimaginable, the, un, the, the, the more that we can ask, hope, or think kind of blessing, God. We're open, hallelujah, to receive. And we're going to keep pushing and pressing toward the mark of the prize of the high calling because that's your mandate for us. And God, anything that's not like that in us, please take it out. Strengthen us. Fix it, God. Heal it, Lord, so that we can be more of your people and give you that pleasure that you can smile on us, Lord. Smile on us. Smile on us. God, you smiled on us. Smile on us, God, that our relationships are right. Smile on us, God. That our, that our kinship is right. Smile on us, God, that we are good stewards, Lord. Smile on us, God, that you can be pleased and that our resume can bring you glory. Smile on us, that our righteousness will prevail. Smile on us, oh God. Shine your light in us, wherever we are. God, whatever we are, we cannot hide from you. So shine the light of righteousness on us so that we can be able for the generations to come. When I'm long gone, Lord, let the generations after me shine in the light of your righteousness and truth. Because, Lord, that's what you're worthy to be doing, to show yourself mighty and strong. You deserve the first place in our lives. We pray that you be first in our lives. It's in Jesus' name. It is for your glory, God. Emma Rosha, it's for your honor that we even come before you. We come with expectation by our faith. We expect you, how my best say, we expect you to do great and marvelous things because you are that kind of God. And for those of us who believe it, we say amen and we give you praise. Hallelujah. And we give you glory. Huh? Yes, Lord God. Hallelujah. We glorify the Lord. Magnify the Lord with me. Let's exalt the name of the Lord together. I was glad when he said now that we were his people yep. called by his name. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. We have the ability. We have the responsibility, Lord. Hallelujah, God, to praise and worship worship the Lord. Praise and worship the Lord. Praise and worship the Lord. Thank you, oh God. Thank you, oh God. Thank you. Thank you. This is a good time to worship the Lord. Hallelujah. In spirit, we do it in spirit and we do that in truth. Why? Because he's worthy to be praised. Come on, saints. He's worthy 
We came in saying we won't complain. He's worthy. We came in saying he's a mighty God. You, he's worthy. We came in saying that he's everything. Now he's our beginning, our end. He's our first, our last. He's everything. We came in declaring that no weapon formed against us will be able to prosper. We don't care what kind of issue it is. We won't complain about it. Why? Because we know how good who God is. And those of those who didn't be, be joining us, we were wondering why we're so excited already because I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. I woke up this morning declaring that I'm going to go on and see what the end is going to be. I woke up this morning committed and thankful to God and everything that happened for me. I'm yeah. about it. I'm glad about it. Anybody hey. else? About yes. it, I'm glad about. So, so glad. glad, so glad, so glad, so glad. So glad that Jesus did it for me. Hallelujah. So our yes. first Thank reading you, is come. Thank you, Jesus. Verses, mm. yes, oh God. Three, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. oh God. Yes, oh God. Yes, oh God. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank, Thank you, oh God. Hallelujah. Yes. Thankful. Thankful. Thank you. So glad. Thank I am so oh, glad. glad. Verses mm. three through uh, seven is our first reader, uh, eight through 10, our second reader, and then our third reader will be verses 11 through 14. I'm so glad. Hallelujah. So glad. Mm. Yes, this is, God. This is it, saints. This is, this is why uh, when we talk about joy and we talk about being happy, mm. those different things that make you think about what that spirit might do for you is because uh -huh. God says, the joy of the Lord is your strength. And so when, so when the enemy tries to take away your strength, and I, I mean both spiritually and physically, he tries uh -huh. to rob you of your joy. My, my. Yeah. And when your joy has been robbed from you, you got to fight to get it back. I, where the fighters at? You got to fight to get it back. How how do you yeah. fight? You fight to pray. You fight to uh, prayer. It's one way to fight. You fight through the word. You fight. You fight. You say, devil, you will not have my joy because the joy, this world did not give it and the world should not be able to take it away. Blessed yeah. be the name of the Lord. I'm so glad that my joy is not predicated on what's God. happening. My yeah. joy is who I am to God. And listen, my daughter used to say, Mom, you act like God only loves you. Well, you should every now and again act like you're the only one. Yes, Lord. Oh, how special, how wonderfully and fearfully mm -hmm. you've been made. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. what you're doing, giving mm -hmm. God glory, giving mm -hmm. God praise. Yeah, yes. do I feel like I'm the only one? Yeah, mm -hmm. every now and again, I'm like, it's just me and you, God. Why? Wow, it's an intimate it relationship. It is personal. Yes, God. God. Said, oh, well, it's an intimate yeah. thing to God that this is this is what some folk are missing with yeah. the religiosity. But when you thought you when you when you understand that God created us to be in this very oneness with God, my Lord, oh Lord, Lord, God, go go all the way back to the garden where everything was delightful and there were no interruptions. That's what God wants us to get back to. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's why we push. Yes. That's why we fight. That's why this weaponry is against a stronghold that's trying to oppress us out of the benefits of the garden. I'm not getting yeah. ready to let anybody I know. That's right. By it. And listen, now you can choose to believe it or not. But it's the weaponry of our warfare that we fight to get back to the garden. We're, we're fighting to get back to the place of delight. And so when we get reminded of the call, I pray that helps you do that. I pray that that helps you do that. We're going to start with um, Sister Nanette first. She's going to three through seven. Sister Hubbard's going to do eight and uh, nine and ten. And then Sister Sherry is going to close us with eleven through 14 and uh, we're going to just run right through it no breaks and then we're going to go into the lesson and you, you're going to come with your questions uh and uh, I, I i we're going to come with some answers and we're going <laughs> to celebrate who god is today i'm ready for you whenever you are sister Nanette. God bless good you. morning elder and good morning ephesians 320 ministry good morning good morning and today's sunday school lesson is coming from 2 Timothy verses 1 through 3, verse, I'm sorry, chapter 1, verses 3 through 14, and I will be reading 3 through 7, and verse 3 begins, and it's from the NIV, 
The yes. New International Version. Thank you, God. Very good. And verse three begins, I thank God whom I serve as my ancestors did with a clear conscience as night and day, I constantly remember you in my prayers, recalling your tears. I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. Mm -hmm. I am reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice. And I am persuaded now lives in you also. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying of my hands. Mm -hmm. And verse seven says, for the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, mm -hmm. but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. All right, Sister Hubbard, whenever you're ready, verses 8, 9, and 10. So in verse 8, so do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord, or of me, his prisoner. Rather, join with me in suffering for the gospel. By the power of God, he has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This mm -hmm. grace was given us in Christ, in Christ Jesus, before the beginning of time. Thank you, Lord. That goes through 10. But it has yeah. now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who has destroyed death and has brought life and immorality to light, to, to light through the gospel. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, God. And I will pick up at verse 11. And of this gospel, I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher. That is why I am suffering as I am. Yet this is no cause for shame because I know whom I have believed. And I am convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him until that day. What you heard from me, keep as the pattern of sound teaching with faith and love in Christ Jesus. And verse 14, guard the good deposit that was entrusted to you. Hmm. Guard, yes, it, guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit who lives in us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all love that reading, didn't you? you I, I heard all kinds of ums and yes, yes and right. thank you and glory. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, so, good deposit. Good deposit. <laughs> good deposit. Yeah. So, so tell me, so talk to us about the, those items, those promises, those prevailing uh, gifts, because you we, we all know clearly this is not just about Timothy. This can't just be only Timothy that's going to get the blessings of what happens when you stay in the spirit of God, right? So what, how do you, how do you connect? What are you connecting? Well, what we just say that we take this personally, you know, we, mm -hmm. it's a personal thing. So when you read these, you have to say, I, that's me. Oh, it's a me Nanette, too. Nanette, thank God, yes. whom I serve as my ancestors did. Nanette, yes, God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Yes, God. And Sister Herbert said, me too. It's, now talk about the me too movement. This is a me too movement. Yeah. We're not taking away from uh, the other movement, but this movement is the movement that Jesus was yes, offering God. to all the believers that we all could be able to say that what Jesus did by um closing the gap of sin by dying, rising, and ascending for us, we too, mm -hmm. me too, but when the promise is spoken to Timothy from Paul, yes, yes. me too, I can have mm -hmm. all of um, the benefits of the spirit of God that makes me yes, uh, timid, yeah, who, who else wants uh, another one, that, or something else rather that uh, resonates with you personally, yes. right? Uh-huh, yes, yes. Uh -huh. yes. 
I like uh, in verse, we said, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. My Lord. And I liked uh, where Paul reminded Timothy to fan, mm. fan into the flame yes. against God. Yes. That was an interesting way of looking at it. And I, I, I felt it differently because of the express, the way he expressed it, mm -hmm. that you, that a flame will die out. It could be burning really strong and fierce and blazing, but mm -hmm. it will die out without oxygen, without you fanning it and just, you know, uh, acknowledging it and keep on fanning it. Mm -hmm. Don't let it go out. That's hard to do, but we must do it. And so, and what makes it uh, easier to uh, mm -hmm. do is when we are all together, right? So what part of the uh, matter of why we are all called to come together is so that iron sharpens iron and that the mm -hmm. flame gets fueled up. And it used to be a time, um, and I, let me just say that it's still a time that is intended that when we're together, that it should be a result of us having been in the presence of the Lord all week on our own. Mm -hmm. And that when we then come together collectively, it should be such a fire, oh, that no one should be yeah. able to walk out of that fire the same. That, 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 so, these, so we don't wanna have a missed moment or missed opportunity. That's why when, you, when people think, well, they really did really push us too hard and too long in praise and worship. No, it's because of power. We know, we mm -hmm. know, those of us who know, know yeah. that the power is meant so that your fire can be so kindled that when you leave facing whatever you have to face that day, uh -huh. that week, uh, you leave in so such a uh, a fervency of faith because you you've been, it's been coals thrown on your fire in the praise and the worship. It's been coals thrown on your fire. And so, yeah, that that's right, Sister Sherry, you're right. That's mm -hmm. right. It's, mm -hmm. it's hard to do on your own, but that's why it's good to stay connected mm -hmm. to individuals who also have fire. That's why I don't put myself around people who don't have fire. Mm -hmm. I'm real careful to not, mm -hmm. you know, because you can't be around, because they will douse your fire so fast and you're like, oh, oh, why, why do I oh, feel I came into this lunch and feeling great. I leave the lunch feeling heavy and burning because you don't put no fire on my coal. I put all of my fire on your coal. Right. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't reciprocated. But it's no. not reciprocated. So some of us need to be careful about who you put in your fire, your, your coal on, because then no one's going, who's going to give you back? Who's going to mm -hmm. give it back? And so uh, this feels like I'm, I don't want us to get too far off because I can on this particular point. Maybe I have to teach a whole nother segment about fire. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, because because uh, I think we talked about fire in our own personal family Bible study, but maybe I need to do a public Bible study on fire because it is intended to be that is contagious. And I used to say as a young person that it always looked like it was just like popcorn, you know, like here and then here over here and then here. It, that's, <laughs> it's, it and it really is meant to be. It it really is meant to be. So if it's not, and then the, the point that always got me was, but it's not on everybody. Why 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 is this evidence? And when I say that, I mean the evidence of the fire not on everyone. It's because somebody's quenching the fire. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Someone is letting the, the, the image of what they are trying to hold uh, up of themselves, let them not be in the fire moment. But then when we leave out of the place, leaving the same way we came in, that's on us. That's on us. We mm -hmm. have to take ownership for that because that's not the intention when we come to, we are reminded of the call, the call to what? This is not only about, and thank you all for reading, not, this is not only about Timothy being called to pastor. This is about mm -hmm. Timothy being called to faith. Mm -hmm. It clearly has to be. Why? Because he mentions the ancestries of his grandmother and his mother. Mm -hmm. What did they teach Timothy from the very, obviously from a very young age? Faith in God. This, and this faith is what is what Paul is commending. This faith in his faithfulness and his um, uh, ability to look beyond the situations that he's mm -hmm. experiencing with the devastation of prison, with the uh, 
issues of the people who don't want to follow his leadership. Can you imagine if he's a younger person? They're probably like, you're too young. You can't tell me nothing. I'm, you know, can you imagine all of the issues that a new pastor might be facing? And so Paul is making certain that Timothy is being encouraged because there might not be anybody who gives back to Timothy the fire that oh. Timothy gives to everybody else. Mm -hmm. I can tell you, pray yep. for your pastor, right? Pray for me, right? Because there might not be enough fire given back to me after I give and dispense all the fire. Um, right. And so, uh, so, so we're in, so we're in Second Timothy. It's the letter that Paul writes. Let me just give and uh, say that it's our key verse from verse number 13. What you heard from me, Paul is saying to Timothy, keep as the pattern of your sound teaching mm -hmm. with faith and love in Christ Jesus. Not in Paul. <laughs> Don't let your faith be in me because I'm, I'm, I'm just like you, Timothy. Don't let your faith be in all the other apostles. They, they all were just frail, fragile, but mm -hmm. let your faith and love be in Christ Jesus. And so um, yeah, you're, you're y'all are right that this this is about this personal acceptance of what happens, and that Paul, um, just for a few points of um, lifting for us that might might help us, that Paul is a prayer warrior. Talk about always keeping someone in prayer. Now Paul needs prayer himself. Writing this <laughs> from prison. Now, we've talked about the fact that prison may not be the same kind of prison in, image that you might have, like it. May not it may not be a dark dungeony like place and mm -hmm. uh, but nevertheless he can't leave on his own and, and clearly they don't want him going around because the, the imprisonment is because of his faith okay. and so Paul mm -hmm. is reminding Timothy who also has been in prison mm -hmm. um, at, at some point of the journey of his faith that you're gonna be persecuted but the question that I remember asking to our um, teachers on a couple of Saturdays ago, but can you be trusted? Can we be, put, put that right at the very top of the page, wherever page you on, I don't care. Can I be trusted? Mm -hmm. Can God trust you? Can God trust that no matter what the persecution, no matter what the ridicule, no matter what the issue of the, you know, targeted attack of the devil against you, no matter, can you be trusted to remain what to Paul is saying to Timothy is that what I see, I'm recalling your tears. I know your pain. I know what you are are facing half face maybe even will face and that he says but i pray so that i may uh i long to see you so that i may be filled with joy now timothy can't give paul anything he don't have so when you start talking about how this joy that we have and when we go be with people and they're not giving us anything back you can't get blood from a turnip that's right no, no you can't <laughs> So if Timothy doesn't have any joy, he can't find joy when he goes to be with Timothy. So he's encouraging him that even if I'm not there, even if uh, even if you're being persecuted, even if whatever it is, I want you to know to keep your I want you to keep your focus on your faith. Keep your focus on how and sincere faith he calls it. Keep, and he so he's identifying the fact that Timothy has received this faith and it has been proven because it's been challenged because we've said before a faith that can't be tested can't be trusted um mm -hmm. if our faith if our faith that we say we're believing for something we have not yet seen the only way we can continue to give god the glory in being able to have faith is that we keep believing and that the situation doesn't change our belief you believe you can be healed? Don't let the pain make you think you can't. Amen. Do you, be, do you believe you can be set free from an addiction? Don't let your temptation talk you out of your healing Amen. and your deliverance. Do you think your marriage can be restored? Do not let their silly conversation at the dinner table make you say this can't work. No, no. You say you have faith in God. 
Mm -hmm. That's right. Right. And so this faith that is the sincere faith of Timothy, trust me, has been tested. And he says to Paul, says to Timothy, which first lived in your grandmother. So there, this grandmother clearly had a faith-filled life. Mm -hmm. And it was evident that she was a woman of faith. Here, Paul is commending two women for some young man. Mm -hmm. And they're the reason he commends his faith because of them. So all those people who say Paul didn't like women, I don't get it. What? What? It's, that's so contradictory. Like these, these are women who are being commended for their faith and what they have taught to Timothy and that Timothy would not be who Timothy is if it hadn't been for grandmother Lois and, and mama, mama Eunice. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and that, 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 and that faith that was demonstrated in them is now being demonstrated in Timothy. Talk about generational blessings to be able to give your faith over to your children and not just to tell them they need to be saved and need to be baptized, but to tell them how much you love the Lord and how the Lord has shown you his love for you mm -hmm. and inviting them to a relationship, not just a bunch of activities. Yes. Right. So they clearly have invited him to a relationship. Um, so that's verse three, four, and five. We have Cry some tears. Has anybody cried any tears? Mm, 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 mm. And you thought maybe you never would stop crying. Huh. Like the pain was just so insurmountable. You just didn't even know. But now if you were to think about, I'm thinking about it really vividly the, the last time, I guess I felt like that. And right. I don't even remember the day it stopped. I don't even remember the day that I no longer felt it, but trust, the testimony is I stopped. The testimony yeah. is God changed it and healed that and I, I stopped crying. And, I, and so the call for Paul to Timothy is God is recalling all your tears, all of your pain. It's, mm -hmm. pain. Yes, yes, it's a part of the journey. Mm -hmm. Don't despise it, and, but also don't stay in it. Because otherwise right. you can write this letter. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't despise it, but don't stay in it either mm -hmm. and so um and so as sister sherry said what really lifts her is that this this fight this fire is a reminder to be fanned and that it has to be on a consistent basis not just from sunday to sunday because then you're you're by, by tuesday your flame is <laughs> um yeah, but it, it's got to be a, a. That's why. See, when you put all of these elements of scripture together, that's why we um, meditate on the word both day and night, because you can wake up feeling that I got this day. Let me go ahead and get this day started, mm -hmm. and then by eleven o'clock, you're like, "Whoa, child, I am tired." Because <laughs> <laughs> and, and so, whenever we feel that, we have this source of how we can get the fire back. And I don't just mean, again, physically, I mean emotionally and mentally, and we need to be able to know how to do it. And so he's saying that um, when you fan this flame of the gift of God, which he commends by the fact that he clearly spoke over Timothy and laid hands on him to anoint him for this service, right? That's what they do. You, you all saw mm -hmm. it at the installation of Pastor Victoria, all the preachers came up and laid their hands on Pastor Victoria to be able to anoint her, uh, protect her, pray for her, and call her into that next, right? So that's what Paul did for Timothy, and he's reminding them of that day. And I think that's really important because it's going to be time in that journey that if he can reflect back on that, that might help him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to reflect back on the fact that Paul asked God to endow uh, that Paul asked God to endow Timothy with whatever Timothy needed for the journey. And not because of Paul's power, but whose power? God. Say it loud. God's power. God's power. God's power. So, uh, yeah. So the spirit of the Lord of uh, God gave uh, Paul this to write. Um, and this is considered to be, um, again, not only a pastoral epistle, which is a letter, but also this is a prison epistle. So it was both. It was from Paul's prison cell or prison state and a pastoral letter to Timothy to help and encourage and to lift 
him out of whatever despair he knows he's facing because he's heard about it. Somehow the word got back to him that Timothy is really going through and you might want to send him a letter <laughs> and give him some hope. Um, and that, but, but Timothy's got a great reputation because he's noted to be mentioned in the New Testament about a dozen times is what the commentary says. That's not bad for young Timothy. That's <laughs> all right for someone who is going through it's okay because clearly timothy has an evidence of his faith and evidence of his faithfulness because it's one thing to have faith it's another thing to be faithful right yeah because you faithfulness and faith are two different elements of our walk and we want to remain faithful as well as have faith and so um he reminds them as the as the uh, outline says of the heritage he's thankful for what Eunice and Lois taught Timothy and that he should not forget about it. He is aware of how it might cause him to feel a little unsure. You know, what happens is if someone tells you you can't long enough, you start thinking you can't. Mm -hmm. You're like, I thought I could. But, mm -hmm. but all the voices are telling you, you can't do that. You can't do that. Mm -hmm. like, Wait a minute. You start becoming now insecure. You won't be happy. You won't have this. You won't make this. You won't. And then you're like, well, maybe I won't. Um, so Timothy has to let all of that go and speak uh, and be encouraged by Paul to know that not to be aware of what that challenge might be, but to face it and the awareness of it and to act not on what they say about him, but to act on what God has said about him. And that Paul's uh, saying, and I trust you to do it. I, I left you in charge. Mm -hmm to do it. Now, we don't have a Paul, do we? Leaving us in charge of a church, but we have Jesus Christ who left Thank you, Lord. in charge of mm -hmm. our walk to be able to display who we say he is in our lives. So again, my question goes back is, can I be trusted? Can I be trusted? So here's a couple of things that the spirit of God will do. Uh, it's uh, verse number seven. One, it won't make you timid, right? And what is, what is being timid? All that passivity, right? Like not speaking up. So when we, so when we think about what, who is he might be being timid with, again, maybe those physical persons who are saying, you know, Timothy. No, no sayers. The naysayers. Come on, Sister Hubbard, thank you. Uh, so he, he might have just become, because if you're only, the only voice saying mm -hmm. God can, God said, God will, God, and all the other voices are saying, that's not, mm -mm, we're not doing that. Mm -hmm. You can become and say, well, you know, I, I guess we're not gonna do it then. But he's but Paul is saying, don't be timid, don't don't let what they are doing um cause you to uh, back down for what God has told you to do. Mm -hmm. And that um uh, so he's recalled his tears, he's reminded him of his heritage, and he's brought him back to the place of the spirit and to to find that the spirit, verse number seven, to, is a gift. Anybody know that the Holy Spirit is a gift? Amen. <laughs> yeah. Woo! And how often is it that we may not use, utilize the gift of the Holy Spirit? Help us, God, because you know how I feel about it when we start saying that, that this told me that and that no, no. And something told me and I had this feeling. And instead of giving full attention to and credence to the Holy Spirit, so the Spirit of God, which is the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God gives us this, uh, this does not rather give us timidity, timidity, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. Okay, so in the King James it says, but God did not give us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. What? You mean, I wish I had been Okay, if y'all want the Bible study on sound mindedness and how it is an attack against the mental health uh, comps of, the, of today, this is why, because we lack self-discipline. So the NIV doesn't call it sound mind, it calls it self-discipline. Why? Mm -hmm. Because can I be trusted? Mm -hmm. Can I be trusted to <laughs> who God says I am? Can I be trusted? And so, um, yeah, okay, let me... I'm excited. Let me back down for a second <laughs> and um, say that the um, Spirit, the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, gives us power. And if we are 
to be able to endure like Timothy, whatever it is that God has calling us to have to endure because this call is not just for pastors. This call is not just for ministers. This call is for believers. Uh -huh. Thank you, Lord. We were called. Okay. So let me remind us last lesson when we were in first Corinthians chapter one, the, the resume of the called ones is wisdom. It was verse number 30 and 31. Remember wisdom, mm -hmm. righteousness, holiness, and redemption. That's, That's not right. just for pastors and preachers <clears throat> and the fivefold men. That's for believers. So this call that we are asking, that the question is, can you be trusted with, is about can we, will we desire to continue to walk in this power of God? And the only way we can do it is by allowing the spirit of God to lead us, to be fanned. Mm hmm. Fanning Fan the flame of the fire, and, and mm -hmm. that we are, and, and, that, and that the challenge is though that because we're flesh, we tend to let our fleshly thoughts, our analytical ways, our rationalizations, our timidity, we tend to let all of those outweigh the spirit of God moving. And transcending us, but but Paul is reminding Timothy, like God is reminding us. I'm, I'm reminding you of the power you've been given. I'm reminding you because no one had to lay hands on you because when you confess Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ sent you the Holy Spirit. Mm. Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. Immediately, I don't know what that faith that says you can't. You have to tarry for it. The Jesus said, "I'm going away to send you the Holy Spirit." Mm -hmm. You had to wait for the, the Holy Spirit came when you said, yes, Jesus is my Savior. Hey, glory. Now you have uh -huh. the Holy Spirit. And so that we, and we need the power of the Holy Spirit to help us to not be timid, to not be uh, lacking the power, to not lack what the love, and to not lack self discipline or being sound minded or having control over ourselves. Why do you have control of yourself so that you won't Forget how to get back to the place of the delight. What questions might you have? What 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 might be on your mind about any of that? Well, something that I did not touch that you read in the lesson that you thought was so good that you want me to say something or you want to say something about it. Oh. Yeah. I do want to say Elder, that I, I, I keep rereading verse 14 because that's good to me too. The guard the good deposit that was entrusted to you, guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit who lives in us. I love that. Knowing that he deposited mm -hmm. into me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, God. How do you guard it? What what might you then help us, Sister Nanette? How do you guard that? How do you guard it? Well, I, I would hope that by prayer that you can guard it by by mm -hmm. by just staying in the word, just just meditation. It's it's mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. yeah. And your face. Yes, and so then um and thank you, Sister Herbert. So then, and then how do you, so this, so this is a call to action. So then what do you do with, so this is for anybody, not just Sister Herbert, but since she mentioned faith, what do we then do with faith to make it actionable? Because, some, you know, faith in, this, in the context of it is, 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 is not an action really until you do something. So, so that's why the scripture says faith without faith work. Without works. And yeah. so what, what works then might we also do to guard and, and to stand on our faith or let faith be demonstrated? Well, I think then it's, it's about uh, showing compassion and love to others, witnessing uh, to others, sharing our faith with others, praying for others. It's about an outward action at that 
at that point. It's outreach, isn't it? It's reaching out. And so if it's when you help the person on the corner because they ask you for a dollar and you give them that and you, um, or you know someone who is um, going through a, a difficult time and you take them a meal or when you um, mm -hmm. send someone a card because you heard that they were going through a surgery or it's the it's because your faith says if I because if it's love notice it says it notice notice in seven when it talks about what the spirit of God will help us to do not be timid but to have the power and love so whenever we can demonstrate show love and so and but but also let me just uh, add sister Nanette when we talk about guarding this the deposit then that means we do we do what I mentioned earlier. We're careful about who we're giving this to and not getting anything. I mean, you got to get it back. So then that means if I come back from the lunch that someone took all my fire, then I have to hurry and get back. I sit in front of a, a good ministry a sermon, a, a Bible. To, I, I get it back. I take the, the time and the attention to intentionally get back what I gave out so that I am guarding it. I also guard it because I'm not watching a bunch of junk that's not feeding me. So I, I so um, binge watching. I've told, I've testified to y'all before. After I have binge watched some, you know, and I love, I love um, uh, detective shows. Uh, well, not all of the detective shows. It's got to be in color. Uh, but detective <laughs> shows. Uh, but if I binge watch all of uh, I'm not going to give anybody any free advertisement, but if I still, and if I feel afterwards, because I do, I feel empty because I've given all my attention now to all these different emotions because I'm in it. I'm like, oh, look at that. And oh, my, and so now I'm tired or I am empty. I fuel myself back up with something spiritually focusing, guarding your, in, your input is vitally important. Don't just sit and watch anything. Real, not thinking it's not going to have an impact on you later. Don't sit and watch the news feed 20 hours and be mm -hmm. wondering why you walked away depressed. Don't, don't Let's not fool ourselves. We are deposits. Sister Ness made it clear. You are a depository. What's being deposited is up to you. Mm -hmm. Go, but yeah. Paul is saying, Timothy, it's up to you to guard the deposit because can you be trusted? It's up to us to guard the deposit. So the Holy Spirit is the deposit, the wisdom and all of the wonderful attributes that I mentioned from 1 Corinthians last lesson, wisdom, righteousness, holiness, redemption. I have to guard it. I can't put myself around people who are going to keep tempting me to go back to my old. I have to guard it. That's true. Now you can be around people who knew you back then because now they're like, I respect her too much to not even offer. I respect her too much not to even do this or do that in her presence. Mm -hmm. Good, because now I can be trusted and everybody sees I'm not playing about my relationship. Brothers and sisters, that is why God is asking Timothy to accept what Paul is reminding him of and that we have now the benefit of this word to also remind us of the call. Remind us. Now, everybody doesn't have a Lois and a Eunice, but whoever it is who introduced you to the faith, reminding them to remember that. He's reminding us to fan the flame, to, rem to keep that fire burning in mm -hmm. our hearts. And in our thoughts. Uh, so these are some of the key pieces that I'm just lifting up to us again. And, and then remember who you are. You are not timid and fragile and, and so easily broken. No, you are strong. And we have to know this power and love and self-discipline is the uh, appearing of the Holy Spirit working on our behalf. Yes, God. Yes, God. So yes, God. <clears throat> and with all of that, you may you may suffer. Timothy, Lisa, you may suffer. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know the level of your suffering, but the more I believe um, 
that you've been entrusted with, the enemy will, of course, attack you the more. New levels, new devils, okay? Don't be, don't be fooled by it. That's why so many people, when they come into the faith, they're curious as to why things start happening to them now. When they mm-hmm. I just gave my life to Christ and now all this stuff is happening, mm-hmm. it's because the enemy now is threatened by our mm-hmm. relationship that he can't have with God because of Jesus Christ. Want you back? Mm-hmm. Why he and he and so and he thank you, Sister Hubbard. And the enemy's job is to try to get us back into his camp instead mm-hmm. of re- being reminded of who we are in God. The power of God now lives in us, so you're not even doing it on your own. So whatever we might be facing, we ain't facing it on our own. It's because of the gospel. Uh, so last few minutes, what 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 else are you all feeling, thinking, feeling empowered by? Wanting more of that soundness of mind and spirit by your self-discipline because it's up to us. It's up to us. Anything else? Hallelujah. Power, power. I feel the power. That's why I love singing that song. Let the power fall when your name is called because the Lord loves giving up his power to his people. But you got to fan that flame. You better have your own song. How many times have I said that? You better have your own song that you can sing when your fire gets out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, because uh, Timothy needed a, a fire rekindling and that uh, Paul knew the challenge of what happens when you are wait, dealing with people. And we all dealing with people. That's true. Uh, whether you are leading them or not, we're all dealing with people and you're going to need this power. You're going to need this authority. And uh, he also wants him not to neglect the gift, which has been given. Mm-hmm. Can, can you imagine uh, uh, helping people who want to hurt you? <laughs> who want you to fail? <laughs> yeah. but, but, but Paul is saying, Timothy, don't neglect the gift which you've been given when we laid hands on you, don't, don't neglect serving the people who cussing you out and calling you out of your name and telling you that you need to get out of their face. And they don't want to hear from you. Don't forget you. That's your response. Don't neglect your gift because your gift is not for, it's not to please them. Your gift is actually for them. And they're just too foolish enough to not know it, but that's, you keep using your gift. You keep you. So you and uh, we all have a gift. Keep using your gift. Keep blessing. Mm-hmm. Keep being a blessing. Don't let them stop you from doing what God has called you power, love, and your sound mind through your self discipline. Keep mm-hmm. being faithful. Keep being fruitful. And then he, um, uh, so that, yeah, so that was those verses. What else? Destroyed by death, brought life, immortality to life through the gospel. Um, I'm still trying. Uh, you that's because you read Sister Hubbard. Okay, she's she says she's good, she's good. Um, she read all of Second Timothy chapter one, yeah, uh huh. And so I'm trying to catch up with what she said about the vineyard because, um, or is she read chapter where you I think she got that from chapter one, all of it, ancestors, spirit of God. Join me in suffering. Mm. In John. Oh, you were in John. Okay. okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You were in the devotional. Mm-hmm. Yeah, John 15. So uh, I am the true vine and my father is in the gardener. Is the gardener. Mm-hmm. This is in the NIV version. Thank you, Sister Hubbard. He cuts mm-hmm. off every branch in me that bears no fruit. So... Um, why would this be the devotional that connects to Second Timothy is probably also because, not that John was written by Paul, but that um, the, still the premise is true, that if we're not, this gift we're talking about, that if we're not utilizing this gift, if we're not being fruitful, God will take it off and cut it off. Because you're not being fruitful. So if God has given us this fruit and we're not bearing the fruit we've been given, didn't Jesus curse the fig tree because it didn't bear the fruit it was supposed to bear? Mm-hmm. Right. 
Timothy, don't get so caught up in your sufferings and your emotions and your uh, uh, the people who are accusing you and the accusations of them. Don't that your fruit stop being born on your branch because you're not connected to them. You're connected to the true vine, which is Jesus Christ. And all of the call came because he died so that you could have this branch bearing this great fruit, but that it gets pruned every now and again. The suffering prunes your Branches so that you can bear greater fruit. Yes, oh, that's a good scholar right there. Challenge the teacher. Come on, Sister Hubbard. Thank you. <laughs> that's a good scholar right there. Don't let me on my toes. Glory to God for her. Um, and yeah. so this is uh, so this suffering um, is to make you not use your fruit. Mm -hmm. John fifteen. Okay. That's how this really interconnects. It, it connect, interconnects in so many other ways. But since I'm at 12, this interconnects because when you suffer, you most of us, our natural intention is to just sit back and say, well, I'm done. I, I don't have to put up with this. I don't have to put up with this. I don't have to put up with them. I don't have to put up with all of that. I was better off before I was saved. I was better off before I accepted this call of my uh, salvation. But, but Paul, John, all the apostles know that this fruit that we bear will mm -hmm. be uh, subjected to this life's journey. And that if the suffering causes you to not bear the fruit, then you can't be trusted. I want, I want to leave us with uh, asking the question on a daily basis, God, did you, God, did you find me trustworthy today? That's what I asked at night. I, did I, did I, where did I miss? What did I miss? But can you, tr did you trust me? Was I, was I fruitful? These are some of the, I don't always ask it the same way, but I'm always trying to ask God, did I miss you? How, what can I do better? Because I don't want to go in the next day not being. And so this, this reminder to all of us of the call is that we will suffer, but it, it's the how you suffer. It, it, it's, it's the way in which we don't forget that it's not on for us only. It is for us to be able to demonstrate who Jesus is in our lives. And then he finally in 13 says, what you heard uh, from me, keep as the pattern of sound teaching. Now, Paul was a great teacher. And I pray if I do any justice to this lesson, mm -hmm. he's not teaching out of his intellect. He's now teaching out of his spirit understanding of who Jesus is. Mm -hmm. Because remember, he was educated before he became saved. Paul was brilliant. He was mm -hmm. serving and sitting under the greatest of philosophers in the synagogue. He was smart. But smart in that context versus spiritual wisdom are two mm -hmm. different things. Mm -hmm. And so Paul says, what I taught you, the pattern of sound teaching was spiritual teaching, this faith and love in Jesus Christ. What we call it, what was it last week? It's foolishness to everybody else. They don't believe that. The cross is foolishness mm -hmm. to the philosopher, but not to those who are in the spirit. So guard that deposit, what you've been trusted with. Guard it with your life. What other questions might you have before we go and give you your questions here? And the quarterly quiz questions. <laughs> Any other comments, suggestions, questions, thoughts? I, I highlighted this on um, this particular slide about the guardian. He's guarding our uh, um, the Holy Spirit guards and protects the deposit when we allow the Holy Spirit, right? So the Holy Spirit, it says the third person of the Godhead, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, um, different functions, very distinctively, but Holy Spirit is the teacher, the intercessor, the guide, and I want to add the corrector, because when we are chastened, it's because the Holy Spirit said, you know that one, right? That you right. Know, treat them well. Holy Spirit will rise up to you. And I, I testify to Sister Hubbard. Uh, I may have shared with you all that um, someone tried to offend me a couple of weeks ago. And um, more than a couple, maybe three weeks ago now. But just recently texted back to apologize. Mm -hmm. I don't know how long it takes the Holy Spirit to work on other people. All I know is the Holy Spirit 
will convict. And so the comforter mm -hmm. comes to remind us of who we are, not in of ourselves, but who God has called us to be, guarding us from everything that we have uh, known and been taught of and that he will seal it. This is what it says in Ephesians 1 and 13, in whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth. Because when you hear the word, there should be a response to the word. Forgive, respond, love, respond, uh, uh, serve well. What Sister Sherry say, serve and do, respond. When you hear it, we do it, right? And in mm -hmm. him also, after that, we believe we were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. And then we've said after we pray, isn't that what we say? Sometimes we'll say, seal this prayer with the yeah. Holy Spirit of promise. Why? Because the advocator, who is the Holy Spirit, the comforter, who is the Holy Spirit, the teacher, the intercessor, the guidance is the Holy Spirit will get us to the place where we can have what we need. Amen. I, I kept this in here too. I forgot. This is a good one. This substantiates what we said about guarding your hearts. The, the media will mess us up. Don't let the media mess us up. Not this yeah. week, not this month, not this year. We are, we are spirit. Listen, and we have to protect what we are ingesting in our spirit with what we have in the media. It can be hard to find a space that says for sound, healthy teaching. Mm -hmm. But there are there are avenues. You have to, we have to search them out, but there are avenues where you can get healthy media. Uh, sound uh, uh, entertainment, not having to compromise yourself. Um, and then it says that the world and the state of the world and the state of the society through the, based on the media can be detrimental. We have to be careful about it, but center our focus on the life altering power of the gospel and let's resolve to make Paul's charge to Timothy, his charge to us as well. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You don't have any timidity. timidity you are without fear you have a sound mind you have self-discipline you have self-control glory to god put your hands together if you believe that god is giving yes. you a sound mind self-discipline and the gift of the holy spirit yes. everybody ready for your poorly quiz question yes <laughs> Question number one from lesson number 11. This is the, the, set, the unit called the reminder of the call, rather the lesson reminder of the call. The unit is uh, entitled God's call. That's all these lessons have been God's call. So uh, yeah, I don't want to get off on that, Lord. Okay. The name of Timothy's grandmother was? In verse Lois. Lois. Yes, 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 yes. Thank God for Lois and for her faith being demonstrated in front of Timothy, not just told what you need to do, Timothy, but shown how you do it by her demonstration. So question number two, through the putting on of hands, Timothy received the gift of God. Is that true or false? Oh. Through the putting on of hands. Feels like a trick question, doesn't it? It is a trick question. Uh, it's a trick question. But um, mm, that's not exactly. Oh, yeah, I I say true. You said true. Okay. Yeah. So um, and 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 so let's so let's talk about it. Out. Let's talk it out. Let's talk it out. So if the gift of God, um, and, and because we're looking at verse number six as it relates to how we answer mm -hmm. this contextual question about what the gift is. So when he fans the flame, this is the gift of God. And then he later says that it was by the laying on of hands. It was part B of that. Of that. Mm -hmm. So which is in you through the laying on of hands. Um, mm -hmm. And now the benefit is we now have not again to have to have laid of hands on to receive this power, but I also want to be able to reinforce that Paul is, by the laying on of hands, is also saying, and I trust you. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing it if I don't trust that you will follow up. I'm not doing this if I don't trust that you will be led by the spirit and that Paul does have an anointing life. After his Damascus Road experience, he became a new person, okay? And so he can lay on of hands and there's something can happen. And you all know the ministry that God has uh, uh, birthed in me, that I believe in the power of touch. 
And that when there is a touch and that the person receives, you've seen what happens when people receive of God. Mm -hmm. Because we've come into agreement. And so that's why this is about the laying on of hands, not because of who Paul is, right? But because of who God is using Paul to help Timothy to become. That's why, that's why this may feel like a trick question, but when you put all of those elements together, I hope that helps. I hope that helps. Um, and that um, we have those questions because we're trying to just help better understand who God is and what this gift is. And so I, I, again, I reiterate that the gift for us is the gift of the Holy Spirit. We all have this gift wonderfully given to us through Jesus Christ. Any other questions or comments before we go into the uh, committed prayer together? I appreciate you. Appreciate you, Elder. Thank you so much. Your time to Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anyone else before I mute your lines? Nothing. Anything? Thank you, Elder. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. For where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So let's have our closing prayer together. Heavenly Father, guard our hearts and our minds from despair and shame through the power of the Holy Spirit who dwells within us. Show us how to live courageously and proclaim the gospel fearlessly. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And I thought to remember, it is so. God has called us out of fear and into his love and his power. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You've been called out. You are the called out ones. Called out of fear into the, don't have to be afraid. We rebuke the spirit of fear, the spirit of timidity. We rebuke that in the name of Jesus. And we call you into the power of the love and the self-discipline because you're going to guard what you have been given of the Lord. So let's go into our announcements briefly and sharing of what we have been given. I don't know why this laptop does that and shows all of my background. I don't even appreciate that. Well, these are your announcements for today, February the 12th, 2023. We decree of the protection and guidance and refreshment for you and your family. Not ambassadors, this is for you, but this is for everyone you know. You should, you need to recite this every day. I have been saying to the Lord, I hope people are not just taking this loosely. We decree, because everything you decree, you shall have protection, guidance, and refreshment for you and your family in Jesus name. And that is our proclamation for 2023. Our hashtag is 2023 Psalm 23 as we are uh, standing and being guided in the year of guided refreshment. We're being refreshed on a daily basis because we are God and God's, we are, we are God's people and God is in us. God is in us. Somebody say God is in us. God is in us. Uh, you are invited to join us as we are in Black History Month. I invite you next Sunday, third Sunday, I invite you to wear your favorite representation of Black history, whatever that is, whether it's African, whether it is current day, whatever it makes you feel like you can display your Black history pride, do that on next Sunday. And then also I'm encouraging and I'm asking, I'm inviting uh, you all to have a, a small snippet of what you'd like to say about or a person or an event that had an effect on history. Uh, come with that on next Sunday, on the third Sunday, uh, and be ready to do that through our Black History Reflection. We're only going to do that on third Sunday this, this year. We normally have something every uh, week, but I wanted to be able to hear from you. You do your research and you bring back whoever it is or whatever it is that you believe made a huge impact on, the hit, on history based on a 
uh, person or event for Black History Month. That's next Sunday, third Sunday on the 19th. Happy birthday to all of those celebrating birthdays in the month of February. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Hey, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. To our beloved brother Mike, happy birthday. Who celebrated a birthday on February the 1st? That's our chair ambassador. He always was lugging chairs around. We still give God glory and honor for the work that helps to build up the kingdom of God. Happy birthday to brother Mike. We celebrate you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. And also happy Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day is coming. And I pray that those who may not look at Valentine's Day uh, in the way that it is intended. It's not just romantic love. I think that should be celebrated. It should be love, period. You got anybody who loves you, you should thank God that you are loved. And if you love anybody, you we should be thankful unto God. But I know, I know what happened. Everyone took the Cupid thing and went, went wild with it. But nevertheless, if you've even ever experienced true love, uh, or have felt love in any way. Let's celebrate that on today. I know I have in the personhood of that one right there. Happy birthday to Sister Tyler. Hallelujah. Her birthday is coming up on February the 14th. Happy birthday. She is and has been our announcement voice when I can get on her schedule. She's so busy, uh, but thank God for her. Happy birthday to Sister Tyler on February the 14th. And if the month of February is your anniversary, happy beloved anniversary to you. May the Lord continue to be displayed in your marriage for many years to come. We're grateful unto God for marriages being blessed of the Lord. Uh, we invite you, we invite you on February the 23rd, 24th, and 25th to the Anointed Word Church. It is located uh, in Bridgeton, Missouri, uh, on Old St. Charles Road. Uh, my dear uh, mentor, uh, I have mentors that don't even know they're my mentors, right? Dr. Alicia Thomas, we give God praise for her in the revival. Revive us again. I will be the guest on that uh, February the 23rd, that Thursday. I invite you at 7 p.m. to join me uh, at the Anointed Word Church. And also for all of the days of the revival and the prayer summit, on that Saturday. Also mark your calendar for February the 26th, Sunday at 3 p.m. We are going to be all roads leading to, as they used to say, to 4111 Goodfellow Boulevard for the 51st church anniversary of the Mount Ivory Missionary Baptist Church family. Uh, Pastor Victoria Turner, leading the church now and we're thankful for them still moving forward and a new beginning i will be their anniversary uh preacher and we appreciate your prayers for mount ivory also april the 28th mark your calendar for 7 p.m that's a friday we'll be with the uh christ southern mission pastor jeff Rohn and the women's ministry team as they are launching their women's conference beginning that friday i will be uh, honored to be their kickoff preacher They'll be in three days of worship and celebration, and we hope you can join us for all three of those days as well. Midday, midweek Bible study. The next session is on February the 22nd, where we're going to resume Mar uh, Mar uh, Matthew, Matthew's gospel chapter number 20. If you need prayer, join us for the Faith and Healing Prayer Line every Tuesday morning at 525 a.m. Central Standard Time, where we take petitions unto the Lord, and we have seen God, signs, miracles, and wonders for those who believe. And we're grateful to the God for the gift of prayer. We're also grateful for your gifts. We're thankful for your physical gifts, the gifts we've received this week, uh, several surprise gifts. We're thankful to God for depositing into the ministry of Ephesians 320 ministries and where you can know that we are touching hearts renewing minds and reviving the righteous spirit within. You can give online on our website, Ephesians320ministries.org or our Givelify app or our cash app, uh, as well as our PO box here in St. Louis. All that information is on our website, but we pray that the blessings of the Lord will make you rich and that you will see the evidence of what Ephesians 320 
says in scripture, exceeding your expectations, giving you more than you could ever ask, hope or think according to the power that works within you. And if there's anyone who might be watching this broadcast who does not know who Jesus Christ is or has not come into the fellowship of this relationship, we invite you to accept that Jesus Christ died so that your life could be full, that you could live, live without sin and the burden and the shame of sin. He became, hallelujah, sin for us so that we would not have to die in the death of sin. And we're thankful that we can extend that invitation to you. And it was the best decision that I ever made in my lifetime. And I offer that relationship to you that when you confess Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior of your life, you can become a new creature. Old things pass away. You can become new, a disciple of Christ, an ambassador ambassador on assignment for the Lord. And we're grateful for all of our ambassadors who are on errand for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. For all of those announcements and for your attention to those. And again, we give God praise and glory. We pray that you have received something today as the reminder of the call from our Sunday school lesson from 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 3 through 14. And so now, as we leave this place, but not from the presence of God. We pray that the Lord will bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you his great peace. Until next time, Elder Lisa, the Ephesians 3.20 Ministries and our ambassadors send mighty blessings unto you. What do we say? As your left foot leaves, say glory, and your right foot say Amen. Love you all so much. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. See you next time.